Welcome back. So this video is just on fuel pressures. So we've rebuilt the K-Jet pump. As you can see, the engine is nearly ready to start, but I'm not gonna start the engine until I know I've got fuel pressure in there and the injectors are kicking that same amount of fuel. So the idea is this is a union you wanna test fuel. And that is the one which comes out, that goes down to warm, your warm up regulator. Now, all we wanna do is interfere with this gap here with a pressure kit. So I spent many hours and over many months trying to research finding the best bit of kit. Now, about 90 quid to the door is what you're gonna get <clears throat> cheapest, but that's still an awkward way of doing it because it's got, it hasn't got threaded fittings, it's got banjo fittings, it means taking too much apart. This has got to keep things simple. So. As you see here, this is all you need, bar one thing that's missing, which Yodel still haven't delivered, which is the fuel tap. But we'll come to that later, because all I want is fuel pressure injectors so I can mix around this kit and get what I need to work at the moment. So, what we've got, simple gauge, 7 bar, nice quality, quality bit of kit. 2 metres of fuel hose, good quality fuel hose. A handful of clips, Juby clips. And then I have got these, which are, this is the size we need to thread, which is M12 by 1.5. So I've got two male barbed ends, 8 mil, so they can go in the hoses. And I've also got this. Now this is a solution I've come up with. This is a double-ended female um, adapter. Again, M12 by 1.5. So what we're going to do, this goes onto the union on there then we have an end come off and a pipe and whatnot so what I'll do I'll put this together how we want to use it just to do the system pressure now what we need to do is block one end of the pipe so that pipe's going to go on there nice little allen key bigger than eight mil tight fit in there juby kip it up put that together and then we can then put it on the area we need to into there and then we can then test the system pressure because this will be empty, there's no fuel in it. So I can take that line off and leave it empty because fuel comes out of here all the way down into one side in there and back out as a return. But as there's no fuel pressure going there, we can leave it out. So what I'll do, I'll build that kit up, I'll put this on there and I'll show you where we're at. Cost wise, all these bits, including the tap, tiny little. Um, same thread tap um, was 54 quid to the door all available on eBay cheapest chips readily available you don't need to spend loads of money so what we're going to do as I said I'll get this rigged up and I'll show you what we're going to do next so we got our first bit on and I said our double-ended female part no sniggering all right and then we're just gonna put in our barbed end do that up tight so that's what you're looking at easiest way to do it copper wash on there that's sealed fuel comes out of there and i can tighten that up and put the rest of the gauge on so there we have our gauge installed so we've got the female barbed end fuel pipe gauge another pipe and that's just blank like i said that's just blank because it would have a fuel tap there and this would then link around and go into the other end of that but as i haven't got the fuel tap yet I can't do that, but I'm not too worried about the control pressure. System pressure is out of there. That pipe is to do the comp control pressure. Now, all I want to do is get the engine running, so I want to make sure system pressure is at five bar and the injectors are flowing. So all we want to see on this, system pressure should be between 4.7 and 5.4 bar. So aim for five bar, and that should be where we're at. So all we're going to do, at the moment, I'm just going to turn the ignition on, get the pump pumps primed, get them coming through till the gauge starts moving. So I know we've got some pressure in there just to test for leaks initially. They're all tight, but I just want to make sure we haven't got any leaks before we start going any further. So I'll get on with that now. Right. So the next thing you want to do is swap some relays around. Because when you turn the ignition on, the fuel pump comes on and then cuts off. But we need the pump to keep running. So this is a fuel pump. And this is a crossover relay. So we need to swap these two around. 
So we take that one out. Take that one out. And this one, you have to turn it around so the pins line up. That goes in there. And now the pump will then run constantly with the ignition on. Right, so we've got some fuel pressure up now. Took a while to get the fuel pressure up. It's in there now. The gauge started moving. Just had to do a couple of checks on the pipe. Uh, I didn't do the, one of those up tight enough. So they're all tight now. And it's building up pressure. So all you want to do now is leave it to run up. It should get up to five bar and you should hear the metering head, um, system pressure valve inside there, click or do something, which is like a little shuttle valve. So it gets to five bar and it'll move across and, and sort of float in that area, diverting fuel back to the tank, holding the constant five bar pressure. So what we'll do, we'll just set you up. Right, so now what we want to do, like I said, turn the ignition on, run that up to approximately five bar and you should hear the fuel meter and head shuttle valve do its job. There we go, pressure's building. That's on five bar. If you watch closely, you can see the needle just fluttering. That's holding a good solid five bar. So moving on to more testing. It's been about three days now. KJ is not the easiest system to work with when you're trying to fault find. Um, like showing the previous ones, I was getting a five bar perfect, just under me. Yeah, it was there. Um, and then I was losing power battery wise. So we've got another, well, charging up battery on it. And then we've got the power there. So we've got 12, over 12 and a half volts at the pump. Um, and I was only getting up to about three and a half bar and the shuttle valve in there was um, opening. So it took me quite a while to work it out. Um, and what it was, was this little bugger. Now this sits in the fuel banjo output line and it's got a little um, shuttle valve inside there. That was what was causing my problems. So I've just taken it out for the time being, probably leave it out potentially. Um, just got a normal banjo bolt in there. So that's in there now. So now when I run this up, I've got a solid five and a half bar actually, um, just under. So yeah, ideally five bar, but it said it's 4.7 to 5.4. So not worried about that. Um, obviously a bit of a mess. Our lovely, um, metering units been attacked by the fuel. Very frustrating, but again, hey, oh, it's any paint. Fuel pressure is the main thing I want. I can tie all that up after. So again, we've got the tap turn up as well, a little tap. So at the moment, I've just got this on control pressure. So I know I've got what I need to do the injector. So what I'm gonna do now is do our first run of um, 40 seconds at full, full throttle really. So the air flap is fully up. So I'll just set you in a position and then we'll run through that for 40 seconds. So that's our first run at 40 seconds done. Uh, the bottles look pretty even at the moment, so I'll just pull them off, put them on a table, and then hopefully that is in the region of 80 millilitres of fuel. So I'll pull them out and see what we got. It's only at 40 seconds, I'm presuming, because really, realistically, are the injectors going to be whacking out full, full pallet fuel for longer than 40 seconds? Even though they will cope with it, but that's just a, a simple test that VW have. So let's get them out and see what fuel we got in them. So that's our first run. We have got a bit of a crud in the fuel and whatnot, but um, not crud, water probably, I don't know why. Um, fuel straight from shell, but um, I don't know exactly what was in the tank, but again, this is why we're doing these tests as well, to get things flushed through, make sure they're all clean, ready to fire. So, one, two and three are pretty pretty bang on. It's quite hard to see with that light on the reflect on there. One's a bit high, four's a bit low, so what I'll probably do is adjust one and four and run the test again. Now, how we adjust these is by the screws under these caps. So I've got one, two, three, and four for the injector lines. Now these screws, now you do the screws in tighter, as in to do them up, you're putting pressure on the spring inside there, which then gives the upper chamber of the metering head a higher percentage of the equilibrium. So then it is easier for the upper section to push the diaphragm down and get fuel out. 
So on one, we've got a bit too much, so we want to undo that. Um, you're only talking 90 degrees, 180 degrees, if that, at a time. Um, yeah, so one will go down, four will go up a bit. Probably look in there. Yeah, one is a bit further down than four, so that's fine. So I'll adjust those, and I'll run the test again and see what we've got. Right, so adjustments have been made for the meter and edge, so we'll just run this test again. So second one, you can see four has come up a lot more, which is good. One's a bit too much still, so I'll probably leave four and adjust one. Because when you're adjusting these, you're not really adjusting the exact cylinder. Because um, if you adjust one, it will have a slight effect on all the others. So four's come up a lot more, a bit more possibly. But what I'll do, I'll adjust one to reduce the amount come out of that. And that should bring four up, hopefully. So let's get on with that. There we go. See, it's changed again. We've got one's gone down a bit. Three's gone up a bit this time. So again, that shows you how they're not exactly adjusting per cylinder. So it's a tweaking game. They're all getting a bit closer. One and three are pretty much bang on the same level. Two and four the same. So what I've done is just adjusted two and four a quarter of a turn, literally next to nothing. They're very fine threads in the adjusters. And then run this again to see how that comes out. As you can see, it's getting to leave a lot more close now. So we're just sort of low on four touch. So I've just nipped for a little bit more, I'll run it again and then I reckon that will be close enough because then yeah, we've got, what we got, 8 millilitres difference allowed between injectors but ideally we want no difference but hey, we'll get what we get So that was run number, I don't know, I've done too many now um, Yeah, pretty happy with that, 1, 2 and 3 look bang on 4 looks low but again, remember 4 is in a different bottle these are in Coca-Cola and that's in Pepsi so I blame Pepsi, so what I'll do, I'll leave those I'm going to measure all those out, make sure within tolerance and that should be that done so we've done some final tests getting some decent measurements and tweaking so 80 milliliters at 40 seconds with 8 milliliters difference is factory obviously i've got a modified fuel pin which is working as we expected so the best i've got at the moment is 110 110 110 and 100 so we've got a difference of 10 milliliters so that's two milliliters out of spec to factory i'm not going to chase my tail trying to get that two milliliters back no chance um it's taken me what's that one two three four five six seven proper tests plus another 10 or 15 more getting them as close as you can get them again we've gone up to one five one one five was the highest down to 95 trying to tweak them but again like i said adjusting one cylinder will have an effect on another one so again where were we where's a good one to look at say yeah so at 115.95 i adjusted that i adjusted three and four on that cylinder after that run so i adjusted that and that came link i adjusted three on that cylinder to drop that down and it left that there but it brought that one up a bit so i mean it doesn't match up what exact cylinders as you would expect so wrapping with that 10 mil difference Give or take, I'm not exactly using scientific measuring stuff. No, we're using Coke bottles and a measuring thing. Um, so accuracy level is as good as we're going to get to not want to argue to try and find an extra two millilitres between all that. So all we're going to do now is run an idle test, which is 20 millilitres at two minutes, three millilitres difference. Now idle, BW do have a special tool to lift the air flap up at a certain point of idle, so all we can do is mimic that with a screwdriver roughly where idle would be and see what results we come up with, so I'll get on with that now so there's our idle position, give or take a few mil don't want it too high, it's hard to know exactly what it is, I ain't got the special tool but that's about what it's going to be with idle, so all we do just turn the ignition on, run it for two minutes um, and then that, hold on, two phones one for a stop all right reset that right yeah so we can turn it on run up two minutes and see what we've got so as soon as we've done that gonna pressure we've got pressure injectors are opening obviously they're not kicking out loads of fuel which is good because that's what you don't want 
So we'll leave that for two minutes to see what fuel we've got. So to conclude that, this is going to be the end of the video. We've just run the idle and we're getting about 35 mil, which is yeah, a bit higher than what we want on idle, but again, there's still an adjustment to do on the CO2 level once we get the engine running, which is a little adjustment on the air flap. So we're not too worried about that because when we get it, it the car is actually physically idling and we can adjust a bit more. So fuel and wise, mainly all the injectors are even within tolerance as best we can get. Again, two milliliters, I am not gonna chase my tail for that. So thanks for watching. Next video is gonna be cleaning up this mess, repainting that, putting those back in. I've got an alternate pulley, clean up, spray up, put that on, get the alternate back on, power steering pump, pipe to go on, find a few checks, uh, throttle body adjustment, um, and then we're actually gonna be trying to fire the car up. So look forward to the next one. Again, thanks for all the subscribers, well over 500 now, well happy with that. Any questions, any problems, stick them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.